Dr. Eric Ball Cavage, and we're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. Today, we're going to talk about a term called thyroid toxicosis. I want to explain what that is, how it relates to what's going on with your physiology, and how it relates to your TSH levels. So thyroid toxicosis is an excessive production of thyroid hormone, and that can occur for two primary reasons. One, uh, the body is producing ex excessive amounts of thyroid hormone. The primary cause of that is an autoimmune condition uh, called Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism, where the gland has just lost its regulation and there's an excessive production of thyroid hormone. That excessive amount of thyroid hormone overwhelms the cellular system and it increases the cellular metabolism. So you get weight loss and anxiousness and rapid pulse and increased bowel motility and the protruding eyes. There's exogenous uh, thyrotoxicosis as well. And that typically occurs because somebody is getting excessive amounts of thyroid hormone prescribed to them. Now, how do we come up with a diagnosis of thyrotoxicosis? How does your endocrinologist or your doctor come up with that terminology? Well, it's really all based on this, TSH. And the lab TSH range is 0.4 to 4.6. Functionally, we like a range that's probably closer to 1.0 to 3.0 for TSH. But as you know, if you've watched any of these videos, I never look at TSH by itself. You have to look at TSH in relationship to a full thyroid panel, not just a TSH and T4, but a full thyroid panel. So we look at this, this is the functional range, this is the range most of your primary care physicians and your endocrinologists are using. And when your TSH values drop below 0.4, then they can start to use that term thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism. Now what happens for most people who are on thyroid medication is that they get so much thyroid medication that their pituitary gland becomes saturated and the, T4, the TSH level drops below 0.4. In that situation, most doctors will decrease the dose of thyroid hormone support back up, reduce it so that the range TSH range starts to come back up to between this 0.4 and 4.6. Does it ever have any relationship to how you feel? Mm, not necessarily, okay? Doctors are looking at a thyroid state by looking at TSH, and the assumption is that the, the pituitary gland, which is what TSH really evaluates, represents the state of thyroid hormone in all your peripheral cells. And that just isn't the case. There, I've talked about this on numerous videos, that TSH represents the pituitary gland and not all the cells of the body. And we've, I've also talked on multiple videos that the pituitary gland under stress conditions has increased T4 to T3 conversion, while the peripheral cells actually have decreased T4 to T3 conversion. There's actually a decreased transport of thyroid hormone into the cells and there's decreased conversion of T4 to T3 and an upregulation of T4 and T3 to inactive hormones that actually compete with active T3 at the binding site. So you could have plenty of T4 and plenty of T3 in the bloodstream, but you can't get it into the cells and it can't bind to the thyroid receptors to speed up metabolism. Now, why does that happen? Well, we've talked about that multiple times. Under stress conditions, the cellular intelligence actually decreases thyroid hormone transport and thyroid hormone conversion. It's a protective mechanism. If there's a bacteria or a virus within the cell, the mitochondria of the cell actually sense a threat response or a danger response. And part of that threat or danger response is to decrease cellular health. And one of the ways to decrease cellular health is to prevent or decrease thyroid hormone physiology within the cell. Make the cell sick enough to kill the threat, and that way the threat cannot keep going. But the problem with that is if you reduce thyroid hormone transport and conversion and decrease thyroid hormone metabolism within the cell, we don't feel so good. Our skin gets dry, we get tired, we get fatigued, our motility, bowel motility goes down. So when this a recent patient was told she had thyrotoxicosis, you would assume that if she had excessive amounts of thyroid hormone production, that she would have hyperthyroid symptoms, but that wasn't the case. She actually had more hypothyroid symptoms. So if you have a drop in your TSH level below 0.4, you are not hyperthyroid. You technically don't have hyperthyroid uh, status within your peripheral cells. You most likely don't have 
uh, thyrotoxicosis in the peripheral cells. You don't have excessive amounts. What's happening is the person who's giving you thyroid hormone is giving you more than your pituitary gland needs, so it's dropping below this range, but you can still have hypothyroid symptoms because it doesn't matter how much thyroid hormone you dump into the system. Under a cell danger response or a threat response or in a hypothyroid state, thyroid hormone transfer and conversion does not occur at the peripheral cellular level. It's down-regulated. So you can have a TSH below 0.4, be deemed thyrotoxic or have ex or hyperthyroid based on the TSH level, yet still have hypothyroid symptoms because it's not about how much T4 and T3 is in the system, but how much T4 and T3 cross the cell membrane Get convert to how much T4 gets converted to T3 and how much T3 can actually bind to the thyroid receptors within the cell and increase metabolism. Now in a true hyperthyroid state, in this grave state, there is excessive amounts of T4 and T3. It's overwhelming the cellular resistance response and it's getting into the cells and it's upregulating metabolism. Not a great thing and that's a pretty dangerous situation. But for the vast majority of people who have hypothyroid symptoms, who have been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, when their TSH is below 0.4, it's not because the gland is excessively producing thyroid hormone. It's typically because they're over-medicated. Their TSH is dropping low, and that's causing, the, the TSH is dropping too low, and it's because they've got They've overwhelmed the pituitary gland with this exogenous thyroid hormone, the medication. But why are they still hypothyroid? It's because it's not getting into the peripheral tissues. Okay, So thyrotoxicosis is an excessive production or an excessive prescription of thyroid hormone. It's overwhelming the pituitary gland and dropping the TSH levels down because the pituitary gland is saturated with T3 but you can still have hypothyroid symptoms because the same mechanisms that caused low thyroid status in your peripheral cells is still there, okay? And if the same mechanism is still there and you continue to try and flood the system with more and more thyroid hormone to try and get those hypothyroid symptoms to go away, it just doesn't work. And so in this situation, the doctor's determining her cellular thyroid status by looking just at the TSH, which is why even though she still has hypothyroid symptoms, he had to reduce her thyroid hormone. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Thyrotoxicosis is typically in somebody who's hypothyroid caused by excessive thyroid hormone per, uh, prescription, and it can't get into the peripheral cells, it's just flooding the pituitary, and that drops TSH levels. Stay tuned for another Thyroid Thursday next week, and I'll actually lay out the, the patient who, um, who kind of stimulated this today's talk. I'll kind of go over her case. I'll kind of lay out the labs, explain to what, what happened to her and what's going on, and that maybe will help you when you go get your TSH values done or your, lat, your thyroid panel done, and you see that, hey, I'm, I'm hypothyroid uh, symptom-wise, but my TSH is really low. I, I, my doctors tell me I'm in more of a hyperthyroid state. So hopefully that helped. Look forward to another Thyroid Thursday next week.